Welcome Grace Gate family to week two of Church on the Couch. My name is Wesley and it's such a privilege that you guys have taken the time out of your schedule this morning to connect with us. If this is your first time that you're joining us, I want you to know that we're a community church that values belonging, um, we value discovering and we value engaging. And even though we can't currently meet in a physical location, we're all about people and we're still all a community. So thank you so much for joining us today. If you're a regular attender or part of our community, we're so glad that you guys have also tuned in. Now, currently in New Zealand and in most places around the world, uh, there's a lockdown because of COVID-19. And we have just been um, so passionately continuing with church in so many different creative ways. And it has been such a privilege to see so many of the team and so many people just connecting on Zoom or in any platform that they possibly can. But one of the things we did this week is we wanted to find out what are some of our church family getting up to during the week in lockdown. So take a look at this and see some of the videos that they've created for us. I like to start off every day with a good old up and go in the morning. After I've had breakfast, I then like to hop onto my electric scooter and go for a ride. I usually spend about an hour out there just riding around, just getting some fresh air and spending time by myself, I guess. So I then went and shot some hoops with a road cone. After I shot the cone up there, I had no way of getting it down because I'm not tall enough to get it down. Um, so I grabbed a broom from our carport and yeah, essentially got it down. Yes, yeah, so I got it down and then I thought of some interesting cone flip ideas because why not? After I did some cone flips and other things, I usually finish off my day with some gaming only because I'm usually quite tired after what I've done and I get to play with my cousins in Australia which is really cool. Before we get started with Church on the Couch, I just want you to know that during this lockdown period, if you're home alone or if you're feeling a bit isolated or just need to talk to someone, please get in touch with us. You can just visit our website and send us a message or speak to us on Instagram or Facebook and we'll try and do whatever we possibly can to get in touch with you or help you in whatever possible way. And on another note, I just want you to know that as a church and as a community, we're praying during this season. We're trusting God that He's going to continue to be with us, that He's going to be with all the health workers, He's going to be with us as a country, He's going to be with the world as we face this pandemic, and also with all the leaders who are making important decisions for us as a country. And lastly, before we get started, um, if you have kids, I just want you to know that we have special videos for all kids up to the ages of 12 years old right here on our website. So if you want, you can watch this program, but if you want to also watch the kids programs, just make sure you scroll down and look for Grace Kids and tune in for special kids content. Um, for the rest of the week, I want you to know that we're going to be on Zoom, we're going to be on Instagram, we're going to be on Facebook, and we'd love to see you, we'd love to engage with you. So please, our life groups are still continuing. Most of our groups are still happening. If you want to find out any information, please visit our website and we'd love to see you there. But without further ado, um, let's get to week two of Church on the Couch. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, Grayscape family. Welcome to our second week of Church on the Couch. 
My name's Azalia and this morning I'm going to be having some cool conversations with you guys. So um, if you don't know, no matter where you're tuning in from around the world, New Zealand is actually on our week and a half into our nationwide lockdown. So it's been pretty crazy this past week and that's why we're here in our living room on the couch. We hope you guys are comfy at home too, wherever it is you're tuning in. Um, thanks for joining us this morning. So one thing that we've realized over the lockdown period is that people get extremely creative when they're bored, just as we saw in some of the videos earlier. But um, maybe that's you and you've all of a sudden become a teacher at home. Your kids are doing homeschooling and you're figuring out how to get creative with that. Maybe you're one of those people who normally always gets Uber Eats or takeaways and now all of a sudden you've got to get creative with whatever's in your pantry and cook a dinner for everyone. Um, or it's been interesting for you to find out how either your spouse or your flatmate, um, what they're like when they're actually in full work mode, even if it's just on the phone or on Skype, and it's pretty funny to see some of that stuff. But um, one of the things that we also realize when we are in lockdown um, is that there's actually a lot of unknowns that come up. And some of these unknowns are things like, um, you know, am I still going to have work at the end of this? Or how long is this going to last? How am I going to stay healthy? How are my kids going to cope with school? All of these worries sort of come up and sometimes some of those worries actually even turn into fear, which is what we spoke about a bit last week. But this week we want to look at a God that is bigger than your worries, bigger than the unknowns, bigger than your fears, and he's actually a provider. So, um, we're going to look at a story where people found themselves in a similar situation to us. They had all these um, unknowns and they, had, they needed a God who was a provider. So we're going to look at a scripture in the Bible. Um, it's found in Exodus 17, verse 1 to 7. But before we go and look at it together, I just want to share with you a bit of what was happening. Okay, So basically, there was these people, they were called the Israelites, and God really liked these people and they really liked God back. And they found themselves, in fact, their whole nation found themselves in slavery in Egypt, okay? And they've been in slavery for actually hundreds of years. It was a horrible time for them. And so they had just gotten out of slavery where we pick up in scripture and they were from they were in between slavery and the place that was now going to become their new homeland, okay? So they were on the way. And this is where we pick it up. So if you got your Bible or your Version app, you can get it out and read along with me. So it is found in Exodus chapter 17, verse 1 to 7. And it says, The whole Israelite community set out from the desert of Sin, traveling from place to place as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. So they quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses replied, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you put the Lord to the test? But the people were thirsty for water there, and they grumbled against Moses. They said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to make us and our children and livestock die of thirst? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, What am I to do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord answered Moses, Go out in front of the people. Take with you some of the elders of Israel and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will stand there before you by the rock of Herod. Strike the rock and water will come out of it for the people to drink. So Moses did this in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and because they tested the Lord saying, is the Lord amongst us or not? This is a crazy scripture when you think about the whole story. So basically, if we unpack it, we can see um, that they were in this situation where they needed God, much like we find ourselves in all the time. They had a problem and they needed him to be able to fix it. So when I look at that scripture, I can see that there's um, three ways we can break it down so it makes a little bit more sense to us. And the three ways I want us to remember is the three P's. So the first thing we see is the problem. That's our P number one. And the problem is that 
They are in this desert area, they're completely helpless in the wilderness, and there's no water. That's a pretty big problem. That'd be a problem for any of us, right? But it wasn't even that they wanted water just for themselves. They needed it for their family, and they even needed it for all their livestock. And their livestock was actually their way of, like, surviving, basically. So this was a really serious situation they found themselves in. And the problem, though, is not only do they not have water, but they're going to get help from the wrong places. So they go to Moses and they're like, give us water to drink. And Moses, he's actually in the exact same situation as them, right? Like he's also in the desert. He doesn't have any water. And even if he did, he wouldn't have enough for everyone. But it makes me think, how often do we actually go to the wrong places for um, our needs to be met? You know, how often are we going to the wrong people and asking for our needs to be met? So that was the first problem. And then the, the second P that we come up with is the past. And basically we see when we read this scripture that um, they've forgotten all the ways God had provided for them in the past. Remember, these are the people who were in slavery in Egypt, and now here they are free. And if you just look back in just a few verses, a few chapters in the same book in the Bible, there's four ways that God actually provided for them in crazy ways and he met their needs and one of them is that first of all like I mentioned they were slaves they prayed for God to free them and he did the second one is just as they got led out from freedom they were like leaving Egypt where they were slaves and then all of a sudden the ruler of Egypt he decided actually you know what I don't want my slaves to go I want them all back so he sends out all his soldiers and he says to them Hey, go capture all my slaves and bring them all back because I've changed my mind. And so that we find that the Israelites are escaping, the army's on hot pursuit, and the Israelites get to this dead end, right? And they come up against this huge body of water, this sea, and they pray to God, God, help us. And they have this huge need. And what does he do? He provides for them. He provides for them in this crazy way that he actually parts the whole sea that they can be free. And like that is a crazy miracle where God provided for them. So that was the second one. And then just a little bit later, they're in this desert. They're on their way to where they need to get to. And they come across another situation where there's no water, right? And so they're in the desert again. They need something again. And they ask God. The water that was there was like bitter and it was like poison, so they couldn't drink it. And they pray to God and he cleans the water for them and provides for them yet again. So that's the third time, right? And then just one chapter back in chapter 16 from our story, we see that the fourth miracle is there where God provides and he brings food for them out of thin air when they need it. And it's just crazy to think that here we find this story where the Israelites are forgetting that God has done these awesome four amazing miracles, just like in a short space of time just before this, and yet they forget who they can turn to to meet their needs, right? And they start fighting amongst each other and fighting with Moses. And I think when we read it like that, we're like, what's wrong with these people? But actually, how often do you and I actually find ourselves in the exact same situation, right? Like we find ourselves forgetting that God just provided for us yesterday or last week or last month, you know. God provides for you and me all the time and we can often find ourselves in the exact same situation, forgetting it. So this is where the Israelites were struggling. They forgot their past and they were going to the wrong people for their problem. And then we have our third P. So the third P is the provision, right? And we've read the story and we know what happens. And the, the story says that, so God told Moses that he'll go before him. And then if Moses hits the rock, that he would provide the water. And he did. And he provided water for all of them and not just for themselves, but for their livestock as well. And it's an amazing story. And the cool thing is that not only did God meet their needs, but he actually uses Moses to be his instrument for doing it. And then the, the next thing that we notice is that um, he provides it in the most unexpected way. You know, if I was thinking about it, God could have probably just made it rain, right? And they could have put out their buckets and that's how he provided for them. 
or he could have led them to like a little oasis or a stream or something where there was already water. But instead he actually um, makes water come from a dry rock in the driest desert. And I was like, why did he do that? But I think it's actually just to remind us that not only does he provide, but he provides for us in the most unexpected ways and in the most unexpected places, which is so cool to think about. And if you just read at the very beginning of that scripture that we just read, actually it says um, that they went from camp to camp, stopping wherever God commanded them, meaning God was in control. He knew where he was taking them. He knew there was no water there, but he also knew that he would provide for them. It's pretty awesome when you look at the story like that, and I think we can see ourselves in loads of those situations. Um, but the last verse then in um, verse 7 says that Moses then named the place Massa and Meribah, meaning the place of testing and quarreling. And I think, why would Moses name the place basically a place where they had doubt and fear and where they like question God? Why would he want to remember that at all? Like that's an embarrassment really. But I think that he named the place that so that whenever they came back from there, or if they passed it again later on in life, they would remember that that was actually a place where their unknowns, their worries, their doubts and fears, like we all have, there would be a place where they would remember that all of those were met and that God provided for all of their needs in that place, which is just awesome. And if you think about the season that we're in at the moment, um, especially being in lockdown and that we have all these unknowns around us, I just want to challenge us as a church family to, to name this place that we're in, to name this season that we're in for something different, to not let it be a place where we questioned our faith and we fell apart, but let it be a place that we actually when we get out of lockdown and things go back to normal, we look back on this season at the moment and that we can see it's this place where our faith grew hugely, that um, our hope also grew and grew so much that we shared it with everyone that we met and that it was a place where we saw God's provision in crazy ways that we'll never forget. And that's my hope from this season that we're in. And if you think about your life, where you are at the moment. You're an Israelite in the desert place, maybe. Maybe that's where you find yourself. What provision do you need to ask God for today? Maybe for you it's um, it's financial and you're not sure if you're going to have work after this or how you're going to meet your payments and you just need some clarity from God on that, how he's going to provide for you or to give you peace about it. Maybe for you it's emotional and you have an emotional need and a hurt that's just been going on for so long and you need God to come and provide healing in that situation, restoration in that situation. Maybe for you, you actually need some, some help um, spiritually and you find yourself in this dry desert situation just like the Israelites where you're actually questioning just like they did, is God amongst us or not? Whatever situation it is that you find yourself in, God is a provider and he is there for you. He already says he wants to help you. He wants to meet your needs. If only you ask him, just look back at the ways he's provided for you in the past. Whatever your problem is, he'll still be your provider. I, I want to tell you a story of one time when God provided for me, and it's just in a small way, but th this just shows the point that, you know, God can provide for us in big ways or small ways, whether it be a huge need or a small need. He's just as interested in it. And a few years back, I lived in a town called Rotorua in New Zealand here, and I was coming from my hometown, New Plymouth, and going back to Rotorua where I was working, and it's about a three and a half hour drive between the two. And then I found myself halfway there in the, a small town in the middle of nowhere on a Sunday night and my car decides to break down. So I was all by myself. I was in the middle of nowhere in a town that actually only had about two buses going through it a day and it was six o'clock so the buses had stopped for the day. And thankfully there was a little bit of cell phone reception. So I did what a lot of people do when they panic and don't know what to do. And I called my dad. 
So I called my dad, who was about three and a half hours away at the time, and I told him my problem. And there was nothing he could do, but he sort of calmed me down. And then he said, hey, go check out some options and call me back when you come up with something. So I hopped out of my car and I packed some of my things in it. And my car was just like on the side of the road. And I prayed to God and I was like, God, you know I need to get home. I've got nothing, basically. I even checked out the bus stops just in case. Um, but God actually provided for me in such a crazy way. So I decided I was going to hitchhike, right? So I get out on the road and I put my thumb out and I was praying the whole time. I'm like, God, I need to get home. I don't know what to do. Help me out here. I was feeling really anxious and worried. And um, just five minutes later, this truck pulls over, this huge truck. And I was like, great. And it was actually an egg truck driver and they were driving eggs from supermarket to supermarket and they gave me a ride. They gave me a ride about like an hour, just over an hour. And they actually dropped me right off on my street. And when they dropped me off, they even gave me a carton of eggs. And I think it was just such a cool reminder for me. I know it's something small, but it was a reminder that God's like there even in the small things. And there's been hundreds of times since then that God's provided for me, you know. There's been times that um, I've been needing a place to stay and had nowhere to go and He literally gives me accommodation right then and there. Or times when I've been on the other side of the world traveling and I've found myself in like a bit of a dangerous or scary situation and God has provided for me there. There's been times where I needed financial help and I've got the help I need at the exact time I needed it. In times when God has sent someone to speak something into my life or encourage me at the very time that I really needed to hear it most. And these are just a few of the times that I can look back in my own past personally and see the amount of times that God has just provided for me over and over again when I found myself in the unknown. And I know He'll do the exact same for you. He, he promises to be our provider, whether it be in a big way or a small way. So before we finish up here, I want us to be able to read this verse that we can just plant our feet on this week with no matter what comes our way. And it's found in the Bible in Philippians 4, verse, um, verse 19. And basically it's this guy called Paul. And Paul is a Jesus follower and he was writing this letter to this church. And this church found themselves in a situation kind of like the situation we're in. And basically they just needed some encouragement. So if you want to get out your phones again or your Bible, we can read it together. And it's found in Philippians 4, 19. And this is what Paul says to the people. He says, And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of His glory in Jesus Christ. And the coolest thing about this verse is often the part that we take away like, Oh, that's so good. God's going to meet all of my needs. And so all the things I'm stressing about, He's got it. And that's cool. And we can take that away. But I think we need to actually look at the whole verse. And the whole verse is, yeah, he's going to meet all your needs, but it's going to be according to his riches, meaning according to his way, according to his plan. And see, God wants nothing more than to meet your needs. But often if our needs aren't met in the way that we think they should be, like in the certain way that we ask or pray for, we think just like the Israelites, is God amongst us or not, right? And we start to question it or turn to the wrong people to find the answers for our help. But actually, God knows what's best for us. He knows what's best for you and me. He's the one who created us after all. So why wouldn't we want to go to Him? So God not only says He'll provide for all your needs, but He'll provide for them according to His ways, which is going to be better than anything you or I could have thought for ourselves. So this week... As, the, as fear and worry and anxiety and all of these things come knocking, I just want to encourage us, let's stand as a whole church family and let's be a body of people who can bring hope into that season. And let's not name this place we're in a place of doubt and fear. Let's actually be reminded and remind each other that God is a provider. And not only is He a provider for you and me, but he's a provider for our whole community and all the needs we find ourselves in and that he promises to do so in the most unexpected ways and in the most unexpected places. That's an awesome story and I know it's going to be our story too. So let's pray. 
God, I know that you're a provider and that you promised to be there for us, but sometimes we find it really hard to be able to believe that, especially with all the challenges and unknowns that go on in our lives. But help us not to be like the Israelites, forgetting the time after time that you've already provided for us in the past. Help us to be able to stand firm like Paul says and know that you're going to meet all of our needs according to your riches, according to your plans for our lives. God, help us to be able to be a beacon of hope for others who need to hear it as well. Amen. Thanks so much for joining us today. And we just want to let you know that straight after this at 11.30, we're actually going to be having a couple of Zoom groups where you can, the links are here below and you can join any one of them, um, whether you know people or not, whether you're a regular Gracegate attendee or not, you're welcome to join and we're going to have some conversations a bit further about how this looks in our own life personally. And if you prefer just to reflect on it on your own, you can get all of the discussion questions off our website as well. So continue to have the conversation. And this week, I just want to challenge us that we can be the Moses to someone else, meaning we can be the hands and feet that God uses to be able to provide the needs to others. So let's go out there and make a difference this week in our community in any way we can.